The first problem we'll do is number 10 on the handout. Um, H is a subgroup of the additive group of real numbers. And K, we see, are, are pow is, consists of powers of 2. But the exponents come from that additive subgroup of the real numbers. And we want to prove that K is a subgroup of the non-zero real numbers under multiplication. So just have a plan. Don't worry that you don't quite see what that set K is using exponents from a subgroup. Just write out the plan. So here's the plan. We want to show it's a subgroup. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to let X and Y be in K. That's what we want to show as a subgroup. And we hope to show that x, y inverse is in k, and then we'll be done. We're going to use the subgroup criterion test. So that's our plan. And now let's see. You have to be really careful to understand what these groups are. So I'll start by just let x and y be in k. OK, now I have to interpret that. What does it mean to be in k? Well, it means that x and y are powers of 2 and that the exponents come from h. So let's write uh, then x is equal to 2 to the, well, I'll say h1, and y is equal to 2 to the h2, where h1 and h2 come from h. Now still, even if you don't see what you're going to do, just interpret the membership rules and start writing. And you'll see where to go. Well, we want x, y inverse. Well, let's see, what would y inverse be? Uh, y inverse, let's just check. y inverse would be 2 to the h2 inverse, which we have proven is 2 to the minus h2. So x, y inverse is equal to 2 to the h1, that's x. And I'm saying it is multiplication. It's just straight multiplication because we're from the real numbers here. So I'll say times 2 to the minus h2, which is 2 to the h1 minus h2. Now, in order for that to live in k, all we need is to know that the exponent on 2 comes from h. And it does, because h is an additive subgroup. Since h is a subgroup of the real numbers under addition, we know h1 plus the additive inverse of h2, which is minus h2, is in h. Therefore, x, y inverse is in h, and we can conclude k is a subgroup of r star by the subgroup criterion test. And that's what you're going to do every time. Look at that plan up there in yellow. Let x and y be in the set and show that x, y inverse is in there. And just start writing. What, what does it mean to be in k? You write that down and you try to find out what y inverse is and then combine x, y inverse and see if you can prove that it satisfies the membership rules for k. The second part of this problem is to actually do an example and, uh, of, of what was described, the, the subgroup that was described in part A. So determine K if H is the cyclic subgroup generated by 3. And note H is in the group, the reals under addition. 
So you got to remember what group it's in. So let's write out H and get a better idea of the numbers that are in there. We know that 3 is in there, and 3 plus 3, adding another 3, adding another 3, and so on. Multiples of 3. Uh, 0 is in there, and all the additive inverses. All right, so h is simply the multiples of 3, but it is generated by using addition. Okay, now let's write what k is. First, let's just write the definition. k is the set of all powers of, let's see, was it 2? Yeah, 2 to the n, where, or let's say 2 to the h, where little h comes from h. Okay, so that would be then 2 to the, let's say, 3n, where n comes from the integers. We have to get that in there somehow. Maybe you would, I mean, because h is simply the, this h here, we could write as the set of all 3n, n in z. And that helps to do that because then we can characterize the exponent as a multiple of 3. That helps. Okay, so uh, if you didn't do that, you might you might write uh, two, you might write it this way. Let's let's look at it another way. Uh, two to the minus six, two to the minus three, two to the zero, which is one. Two cubed, two to the sixth, two to the ninth, etc. You could have just written k out that way. But I think that the uh, characterizing the exponent as a multiple of 3 will make it easy. Oh, well, I guess we're done. It just said determine k. So either way, I was thinking there was more to the problem. So that's, that's the answer. And notice that it indeed is a subgroup. You have, uh, you have the identity. And if you take 2 powers of 2, where the powers are multiples of 3, like, you know, 2 to the 3m times 2 to the 3k is going to give us 2 to the 3 times m plus k. So you can see it is a subgroup. The second problem I wanted to do for you is um, number 7. Okay, H is a subgroup of a group G, any group. The centralizer of H, now we've talked about the centralizer of an element A as being the group members that commute with A, but now we're doing the centralizer of a subgroup. And it is the, you just look up here at the definition, it's the set of group elements that commute with every element of H. The set of group elements that commute with all elements of H. Okay, so we have the center of a group being the elements that commute with the entire group. We have now the centralizer of a subgroup and then we already had the centralizer of an element. So we want to prove that this is a subgroup of G. All right, we have exactly the same plan. Let X and Y be elements of the centralizer of H. Now interpret what that means. Then X and Y live in that set. So they commute with all H's in H. Okay, so XH equals HX and yh equals hy for all h in h. Commute with every element of h. Now, I know that what I want to show, I'm going to just put that in a thinking cloud because you wouldn't have to write it down, but what I want to show is that xy inverse lives in the centralizer of h.
In other words, I want x, y inverse commuting with h for all h in h. So I want this x, y inverse h equals h x, y, y inverse. This is, this is what will give me. I'm thinking backwards here. I know I want x, y inverse in the centralizer. What does that mean? Well, I've got to show that it commutes with h. So you can't just write this down, can you? Because what we get here, this is just thinking, x, y inverse h, I can't move the h to the left because this group is not necessarily abelian. So I'm going to, in my planning, I'm going to go back to my proof here, and I am going to show that if y, I know x commutes with h, so I could switch the x and the h, but I can't the y inverse, so I'm going to use this right here to show that y inverse also commutes with h. Okay, so this implies that uh, let's multiply on the left by y inverse. y inverse, yh, is equal to y inverse hy. Well, then I get, using the associative rule, the y's will cancel, and I get h is equal to y inverse h y. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply on the right by y inverse. y inverse, y inverse on the right. And so I get then h y inverse is equal to these cancel and I have y inverse h. Okay, so if h commutes with, I mean if y commutes with every h, then so does y inverse. So now I can write xy inverse, xy inverse h is equal to x, y inverse h, the associative property, and I can commute y inverse with h, x, h, y inverse, by what we just proved, and now xh, y inverse, the associative property, and now I know that xh equals hx, so I have h, and I'll use the associative property in, in the same step, h, x, y inverse. All right, so we just showed that x, y inverse commutes with h for all h in the group. Um, let me make a little correction here. Let x, y be in here. Okay, let's, let's go back up here and say let h be in h. I didn't say where we were getting that. So h is any element of h. That means that it represents all elements. So we can conclude. I ran out of room here. We can conclude. Let's see, I'll write my conclusion in, in white here. It should be beneath this. We can conclude then, since x, y inverse commutes with h, we can say, therefore, x, y inverse is in the centralizer of h, and the centralizer of h is a subgroup of g by the subgroup criterion test. So now there's asking you to actually find a centralizer, and this is always working in the groups that we, that we are familiar with. So we know that S5 is the group of permutations of the set containing 1 through 5. And we want to find the centralizer of the cyclic subgroup generated by the single permutation 1, 2, 3. Well, that's the powers of 1, 2, 3, so we can just, we'll be able to just write out the centralizer. The set of all permutations that commute with 1, 2, 3. Well, certainly the identity does, and any power of 1, 2, 3. So that's 1, 2, 3, and squaring it, or re repeating it, we get 1, 3, 2. Okay, so there's sigma, sigma squared. 
sigma cubed is the identity. So we know that powers of any element commute, but also any disjoint cycles commute. So let's see, we have the cycle 4, 5, which is the same thing as 5, 4. So that commutes with 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, and 1. And we need to then form any multiples of these. This, this centralizer has to be closed. So the permutation 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, and the permutation 4, 5, 1, 3, 2. And there we have it. Notice there are six permutations. If we multiply any of these two together, we just get powers of 1, 2, 3. Then we stick in 4, 5 because it's disjoint from, the, from 1, 2, 3 and 1, 3, 2, and we know it commutes with them. But this permutation is the product of these two, and this permutation is the product of the other two. And of course they commute. You could check yourself if you take 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, and multiply it together. Well, that's exactly what you have. There's, they're disjoint. This is a permutation on its own right. And if you multiply that, well, for example, to 1, 2, 3, you're going to get 4, 5, 1, 3, 2. And if you multiply it on the other side, you get exactly the same thing. Just check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Well, these two commute. So it is the same thing as 4, 5 times 1, 2, 3 squared, which is 1, 3, 2. So what you do is you put in the, alum, the permutations, and then you make sure you have all products of these in there so that you have closure. We had to put these two in to get closure, but they also commute.